So here we are, lesson 4.5 of our Roots and Powers unit, Negative Exponents and Reciprocals. So we're going to talk about the reciprocal idea first. Now I've already introduced the idea of a negative reciprocal, and of course you take your fraction, flip the sign, and change the numerator and denominator. So if we look at just a reciprocal, we are going to essentially be flipping our number, and that will be our reciprocal. We have an actual definition of reciprocal here to be two numbers that if multiplied together equal one. We call these reciprocals. And we have some examples here. Five times one-fifth. Well, if we're going to multiply these together, we would say this is really five over one. And then if we were multiplying fractions, we go five times one to be five over 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 over 5 is 1. Same way, if we've got 4 fifths and 5 over 4, 4 times 5 is 20 over 20, which of course equals 1. So a reciprocal is simply the numerator and denominator flipped. So we can say that 5 is a reciprocal of 1 fifth. And when the verse happens, one-fifth is the reciprocal of five. So we're going to have to use ideas of reciprocals when working with negative exponents. Let's look at an example here. Changing to the reciprocal eliminates the negative sign. So essentially what we're doing here is we got four to the negative two. Now we can't do a negative to an exponent. That just doesn't work for us. We can only do positive exponents. So in order to get rid of the negative 2, we have to do the reciprocal. So we would see this as this is really 4 over 1. So I would flip it to 1 over 4 to the power of 2. So the negative 2 turned to a positive 2. And of course, I can simplify this to 1 over 16. So 4 to the negative 2 simplifies to 1 over 16. Let's try another one here. 1 third to the power of negative 3. Now you'll notice in this example, the negative 3 is only attached to the numerator, not the denominator. If I had an example like this, where it was in brackets, then the negative 3 would be to both the numerator and denominator. But in this case, we don't have that. So I've got to get rid of the negative part of the exponent, so I'm going to do the reciprocal. So that becomes 3 over 1 to the third. And again, I can work out 1 cubed, 1 times 1 times 1 which is 3 over 1. And of course here I don't have to have the 1, so it just becomes 3. Okay, we can also apply these fractional exponents. So in this case we have to bring the idea of yesterday and today, a negative fractional exponent. So I've got 121 to the negative 1 half. So the first thing I'm going to do is take care of the negative, so I'm going to do the reciprocal. That's over 1, so I get 1 over 121 to a positive 1 half exponent. Once I have that, I can now look at getting rid of this fraction. Now I know the 1 stays the numerator. The 121 goes under a root sign. The index is going to be 2. And the power is going to be 1. So I essentially have 1 over the square root of 121. And of course I can simplify the square root of 121 to 1 over 11. So 121 to the negative a half becomes 1 over 11. Okay, now let's look at an example where the exponent is fractional and negative and is applied to both the numerator and the denominator. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of that negative, so I'm going to flip it. So this becomes bracket 125 over 64. 
and the exponent now becomes positive two-thirds. So the numerator goes to the denominator, denominator to the numerator. Now this two-thirds goes to both, so I'm going to work it out to be 125 to the power of two-thirds divided by 64 to the power of two-thirds. And now I apply the fractional exponent. Open up a root sign, put 125 in there. Now the index is going to be the denominator, which is 3, so the cubed root, and everything to the power of 2. Divided by root sign of 64. The index is going to be the denominator of 3, power of 2. Now we have some options. Do I want to do the cube root first or the squaring? I think cube root's a little bit easier. The cube root of 125 is going to be 5, which has to be squared, divided by the cube root of 64, which is going to be 4, and then squared. And I can do the final simplification here. I can take 5 squared and get 25, and I can get 4 squared to get 16. So I got it as a fraction. Can this fraction be reduced? Does it like 2? No. 3? No. 4? No. 5? 6? Can't be reduced. So I got an answer of 25 over 16. So 64 over 125 to the power of negative 2 thirds can simplify to 25 over 16. Okay, quick little lesson, but we learned quite a bit. Let's go to page 233. 3 from the A's, 5 from the B's, 1 from the C's.